Hi, I'm Jackie Albrecht, and uh, Doug Wood is going to be speaking with me as well. Um, so I'm really excited to be here as part of this biotech symposium and be one of the companies giving you this flash update. So I'm going to just give you an introduction uh, to AltiView, and then I'm going to turn it over to Doug, who's going to talk about uh, why and how we used AWS. So I did have to do uh, some cramming for this because I've only been at AltiView as their IT director for one month now. So um, AltiView is in the digital pathology space, and we are venture-backed. We were founded three years ago, and uh, we're in our third. We're, we're raising our third round of financing right now, and we have roughly 45 staff, and we're growing fast. So many of you here have. Um, probably been touched by cancer in some way. It's truly a horrific disease. Uh, the national, according to the National Cancer Institute, the rate of occurrence and mortality is rising. So AltiView is operating in the space where uh, we are aiming to improve the diagnostic tools available to pathologists and researchers uh, in their, in their, so that they have better tools in their arsenals. In uh, the current uh, method model for tissue sample uh, analysis uh, from biopsies, you have uh, a, a single biomarker, which is uh, stained and um, detected within a cell sample. And then uh, that biomarker is a molecule of interest or uh, something significant that researchers have identified. So uh, that is then viewed through a light microscope, and um, then the pathologist is viewing that and making a qualitative assessment of that um, based on what they see. So uh, AltiView is looking to improve those tools and uh, turn that from a qualitative to a quantitative analysis. Uh, so uh, right now we are uh, research use only solutions. Um, but in the future, we are hoping to provide pathologists and researchers uh, with um, support for clinical decisions for patient treatment. So let me talk um, very briefly about our technology, our Insuplex technology. Uh, we have a novel uh, approach uh, for barcoding uh, the antibodies, which then attach to the biomarkers within the cell sample. And then those antibodies have fluorescent probes attached to them. And from there, we can then illuminate uh, that, scan that uh, using uh, uh, fluorescent microscopes and produce very information-rich images. So our vision is to provide uh, those information-rich images to the pathologist so that they can perform their analysis using the assistance of digital tools. So I want to just briefly give uh, some of the, oh, I did want to point out on this that you can see a sample of one of the images with the multiple uh, biomarkers detected using the different uh, colors, and Doug is going to go into a lot more detail around those. So in terms of uh, advantages of our technology, one of the big advantages is that uh, we support multiplexing. So in a single step, we can detect multiple biomarkers versus the same uh, current process, which is uh, uh, lengthy and manually intensive. We can <coughs> detect multiple ones and, and tighten that up. Um, we also have um, the approach that we use for uh, attaching the antibodies to uh, the biomarkers and the fluorescent probes is non-destructive, so it doesn't deteriorate the sample in any way, and that can then be used for further analysis. Uh, we also have the advantage of um, our reagents uh, when you're uh, standing the slide uh, the sample, that you can image the whole slide and get data around that entire set, uh, the, the uh, cell structure. 
So as opposed to some uh, tools and approaches which might just go into a, a small portion of a sample. Another key advantage is that uh, we have um, our, our technology fits within the uh, workflow and uh, leverages tools and instruments that are commonly available and readily uh, in use within uh, research uh, and pathology labs. So as you can see from the slide, uh, we can have our reagents stain uh, using uh, stain the samples using auto stainers, which are readily available, and then uh, using fluorescent microscopes to produce those images, and then using existing digital uh, software tools to analyze the images. So um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Doug, and I'm going to let him talk about uh, how we've used AWS and more about that image analysis. Okay, so, uh, well, Matt's already introduced this problem. Uh, we have a little bit of a smaller big data problem, I guess, but uh, still have a data problem, uh, and I'll just say a few words about that. Uh, so digital pathology image analysis, uh, our images uh, at the resolution that we're scanning, about a third of a micron per pixel, in order to scan an area of a slide of 22 millimeters on a side, which actually isn't a whole glass slide, but is a good fraction of one, uh, you produce an image that's about 7,000 pixels on a side. Uh, we scan that in multiple channels, so our big data problem is not so much 3D, but uh, multi-frequency. Uh, and we have multiple channels, and we can actually stack those up, but in this uh, example, we have five channels. And at every pixel, we measure a 16-bit uh, value for the fluorescent submission at that pixel in that channel. So the raw data alone is something like 50 gigabytes in this example, which is typical currently. Uh, once that is reformatted and compressed, lossless compression, put in the tiled uh, format that uh, Matt spoke about, the files on disk are something like 15 gigabytes. And that's just one scan of one sample on one slide. It's very common that you would scan tens or hundreds of slides as part of a study. So studies are about a terabyte or so. And you might do hundreds or thousands of those studies in a year. Uh, and so we're into the petabyte uh, per data, uh, petabytes per year uh, data range. So that's why we're on the cloud. Uh, we didn't want to build all that infrastructure and de develop that all ourselves. <clears throat> uh, also, in addition to the pixel data, we have the analysis results. So uh, our soft, we use Indica Labs software currently, but you could use a variety of different softwares to analyze this. But it's typical to do a cell segmentation, and for every cell, identify the location of the cell, its shape and uh, on the slide, uh, measure its properties and all the biomarkers, and uh, record all these results. So for example, for a thousand slides, you'd have a multi-dimensional table of values for something like a billion cells. I'll make a quick analogy here um, to space uh, imagery of the Earth. An image, a satellite image of the Earth has a resolution of about one meter. And so this image example that I'm giving here would be something like a 70 kilometer by 70 kilometer image. And I looked it up, that's roughly the uh, square kilometer area of the whole uh, Las Vegas metro area, so at one meter resolution. And uh, to continue the analogy, uh, the cellular data would be like demographic data for individual people in that image, you know, whatever information you have about that individual. So it's like a satellite image with lots of values for all the people that are in the image at the same time. Uh, so here's a, a rough diagram of our cloud on AWS. We have a virtual private cloud that has two separate environments for business reasons, our customer engagement team which is our services lab, takes in samples from customers and processes them using our technology and delivers the results back. So they're kept separate from our research and development team that's continuing to advance the technology. Uh, in each environment, we have a Windows server that uh, marshals the data on EBS because that's required by the Halo software for fast visualization and analysis. We have an analysis cluster that's spun up on demand as jobs are submitted 
uh, to the uh, queues. And uh, those jobs come from uh, workspace users who are connecting either our fiber connection or uh, from home or wherever they might be. Uh, the Windows Server also maintains the slide catalog in RDS along with all the metadata about the slides, all these uh, cellular analyses that are going on. Uh, in, Alt in Cambridge, uh, we have multiple scanners that are scanning to local stores temporarily and scripts automatically upload those data uh, to the cloud and workspace users connect from there. Uh, over time, we move images to S3 for cost purposes and for long-term storage and eventually to Glacier for archiving. Also, our cloud has a secure connection uh, to, uh, via web client to uh, a visualizer and a data visualizer, data analysis tools uh, that are available uh, from anywhere in the world for our customers. So uh, we have a short video and you want to just throw it up there. So this is intended to kind of give you an idea of what it's like to, uh, what our environment is like. This shows a, uh, uh, a, a worker, wherever they might be, logging into their workspace, a scientist or uh, someone from our services lab, a technician. They're launching their workspaces client and they see, of course, a familiar Windows environment. They launch the Halo application from Indica Labs. And here we see on the left the catalog of studies and the images that have been analyzed so far. And I'm just uh, tabbing through some example images. Now these are different tissue types that have been scanned with our fluorescent kits. We have a P, currently we have a PDL1 kit and a PD1 kit. Uh, you can see the wonderful information content he, here in all these multiple channels. You can see the list of channels in the lower right. Uh, and we're now going to take a look at that example that Jackie showed. This is a melanoma tumor example. And we're going to switch to uh, full screen mode and zoom in here on uh, the tumor region, and uh, we'll also show the different channels here. I'm going to turn off all but the DAPI nuclear stain. So this blue first shows you where the cell nuclei are, then a marker for immune cells, and as we go on here, we see markers for the cancer, and as we see the cytokeratin SOX10 as well. As you turn on and off different channels, you can see how every cell has its unique pattern of uh, signals, expression levels, and the different markers. And of course, this is very key to understanding the disease model. And this world, as uh, some of you may know, is called the tumor microenvironment. Here we have an example of an eightplex. This is stacking together uh, multiple uh, runs on the same slide. And of course, you can't really easily visualize an eight-channel image in separate colors. But it gives you an idea here. Uh, they're actually even scrolled off the screen. There's so many color, uh, channels here. And you can see the wonderful information content uh, all through this sample. Uh, now I'm going to do a segmentation analysis. Uh, this is just a quick view at what that might be. Uh, this job is running uh, and uh, multiple cores are processing individual tiles to, for every cell, find its location, its shape, uh, the center of the nucleus and a cytoplasm region around each nucleus. And for each cytoplasmic region, it's uh, identifying whether it's positive in that marker or not with a simple thresholding. You can see as we turn it on and off the graphical overlay of the analysis. And on the left, you can see the uh, analysis results. Now this is an example of logging into our uh, Halo Link uh, client that's visualizing the same data from a web browser anywhere in the world. Uh, our clients, our customers can log in and view their data securely and they only see their information uh, with secure access. You can see how fluid the visualizer here is. Remember this is a very large image, 70,000 pixels on a side. And at the same time you can overlay the graphics of the um, slide of the analysis. Uh, we're also in the web client uh, provided by Indica Labs. You can view the analysis results. So uh, we'll take a look at the tabular information. This is uh, all close to 200,000 cells, how many were positive in each marker and so on, and the mean intensities and so on of those cells. And of course, there's a great deal that one could do with all that information. And finally, this last example shows 
uh, stacked, uh, these are consecutive sections of the same tonsil uh, sample stained with one of our kits, and you can see how consistent the staining is, and that's, again, showing the quantitative accuracy and consistency of our technology. Uh, so uh, I'd also, I'd just like to do a quick shout out to Indica Labs that's providing the software that we use uh, primarily on the cloud. Uh, they've been very helpful getting uh, their software working on our cloud. Also Mission Cloud, formerly G2 Tech Group, was very helpful setting up our cloud, especially Jason Gay uh, at uh, Mission. And uh, also Elliot and Alexis at AWS were very helpful getting us going uh, in the Activate program. And Paul Underwood provided some good initial uh, design choice uh, guidance. Thanks very much. So that concludes our, uh, our flash update. And uh, thank you, everybody. I just wanted to show this is our uh, team at the American Association for Cancer Research uh, this past year. And we also were at the Society of Immunotherapy recently in DC. We received a lot of excitement and uh, positive feedback for what we're doing in our uh, products and solutions. So um, thank you very much. And I'd encourage you to uh, talk to Doug or I if you have questions and uh, visit our website.